What is up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of BH Extra Time. I'm Faris, and this week we're introducing another member to the cast. Um, I'm going to let him introduce himself and the rest of the crew, and then we're going to get on with the video. Hey, guys, I'm Adnan. I'm happy to be here, and I'm really glad to have the team back together. And hi, everyone. It's Adam again. As Adnan just said, um, his back, what he's, what he's referring to is, I'm not sure if any of you remember, but the old BH Dragons cast back from maybe four or five years ago now. Uh, myself, Ferris, and Adnan all were a part of that. It'd be really interesting actually to see if any of you used to listen to Dragon Talk and uh, remember BH Dragons from back in the day. So maybe leave a comment in the section below and yeah, we'll see. All right, well, let's get into the episode this week. We are going to be missing our fourth member, Danny. He could not make it this week either, but he'll be back in the next episode. But we're going to be covering the two friendlies that we just witnessed Bosnia play. The first two official games in the Prostanecki that we played against Bulgaria in Bulgaria and against Senegal in France. So we'll start off with the Bulgaria game and we're just going to give our thoughts and see what we think and how we think the team was under Prostanecki. I think the only major player we were actually missing from these whole this whole international break was Begovic, but in my opinion, Shehich did an amazing job. He's not much younger, if at all, than Begovic, so I don't think we should really be looking to the future with him. We're going to need to look, be looking for some younger keepers, but as a stand-in for Begovic, I think he did a really good job. He um, didn't get scored on in either of these two games. I think he did a pretty good job distributing from the back. I, mean, I know I personally like Begovic a lot, but I criticize him often for his passing range and ability. A lot of times he'll just literally board it out into the stands and it'll be a wasted opportunity because he's not as good technically, but that's just me. It's interesting actually that you bring up Shea Hitch because not many people do speak about him, but anyone who watched uh, the Champions League and watches Karabag would see that he is an amazing shot stopper against some of the best players in the world. He's constantly making incredible saves. And in a way, we're quite lucky that if Begovic does ever get a serious injury or Begovic does have some time out, we don't have to drop down to like a completely shambolic goalkeeper and have um, Shea Hitch's cover. So I see what you mean. He's not really like a few, someone to talk about for the future. He's 29, I believe. But it is nice to have um, a player of his calibre in, in backup to Begovic. And it's something that kind of we overlook a lot, having him as first choice. But yeah, one of the, f the things that I would say I was quite impressive over the two friendlies, not just against Bulgaria, but both both sides, Bulgaria and Senegal, uh, are solid teams. They're both decent. Neither of them are, are easy victories. And the fact that we managed to keep two clean sheets in both games, so 180 minutes played and not conceding a single goal, considering I'm pretty sure anyone who follows the Bosnian national team will say the biggest weakness is defence. I think for that, the new manager deserves some credit and uh, also the players for, for stepping up in the first two games. I love the point you made, Padis, about uh, Shehic's passing ability. That'll be more important than ever now under Prostinecki because he plays that style of ball. He has that philosophy of you pass the ball up the field. You don't just boot it up. You don't go long balls. All of his teams, it's been passing the ball. It's, and it's... It's a system that you have to get used to. It's not something that'll happen overnight right away. But I think we'll see as time goes on, we'll be more and more effective on attack. That's why I'm not worried about the fact that we only scored one goal in these 180 minutes. Exactly, I agree. Um, I think over time, over a few more friendly games, we'll start to see Prostinecki's system take shape. I think it might be a little bit overambitious. He, he's trying to have us play in a sense, the Barca of the last, you know, five, six years, even longer than that, that the Tiki Taka type ball. And as much as I'd love to see us do that, we need to we need to make sure that we can do it before we do. I know we have Pjanic who can do that, Bejic to an extent, and a couple of these guys, but not everybody on our team is able to play that style of ball. And as much as I'd love to see us get into that, I think Prostinecki needs to compromise on a system that works with the players we have, the quality of players we have, and the style that he wants to bring into the team. But I also, I really think our defense needs work. As much as we got away with two clean sheets in these games, I think the first one 
I think we should have gotten a clean sheet no matter what. It was against Bulgaria, and to be honest, and you know, no offense to them, a clean sheet was expected of us. Um, the second game we'll get to in a little bit, but in the first one, um, I think we did okay defensively. I think we had too many chances against us compared to what we, I expected us to have. There's a lot of times where players lost the ball needlessly in the midfield with Bayesh a couple times, and then in the back, consistently, Zukanovic. He would lose the ball, he would try making forward passes up to the wings, maybe to Duljevic or to Djeko, to um, and then have Djeko disperse it out to the wings, and he would constantly be losing the ball. He'd be passing it to the opposition's teams, and it, it was really irritating to me, and I think some things were improved in the second game, I would hope, for Senegal, I hope Rosinecki will see that, but um, I think at least in that game, but I've seen it before too in other games, I did not like the way um, Zukanovic played and I did not like the way he fit into our system. Um, Memeshevich was played out of position, so I don't really know what to say about him until we see him in his natural position. We do really need a right back, as we mentioned in the last video as well, but our current, our, our best natural right back is with the U21 right now and did an amazing job actually scoring an amazing goal but we'll get to that in another episode for them but i think our defense is starting to take shape but presnetsky still definitely has a lot of things to iron out until it can contend with the big boys in europe yeah for sure i mean i know what you mean faris the it was it felt like a sloppy performance even though we did get the clean sheet it, it never felt like it was a solid defensive performance it more felt like it was just good and bulgaria weren't good enough to to punish the defense uh, i think obviously kolashinat's the best defender in that team but he does deserve a shout out i thought he uh controlled the game defensively and obviously got doing his trademark run down the wing and getting the ball into the box managed to create the assist for Kodro to score his score his goal um and yeah overall going back to the whole philosophy of playing the ball out i agreed again the team we don't technically have all of the players that that can play like that i mean in pjanic we have one of the best in the world but i think the team right now is in a good position to start molding where we're not qualified for the world cup there aren't any extremely serious games coming up it's a good time to experiment and really kind of set that mentality moving forward yeah and that game against bulgaria it was it wasn't aesthetically pleasing it was really boring to watch but it's one of those games where you go to Bulgaria, that's a team that's really hard to play against. You know, they grind the game down, they dirty it up, they play that defensive style. And I like because it showed the potential of what the offense can be under Prosinecki's system. It was just this beautiful sequence of passes, these combinations, and it ended up with a goal for Kodro. And I mean, that's, that's the best sequence I've, uh, uh, of play that I've seen from us in a long time. It was nice to get out with the win, you know, a nice little confidence booster. I really liked to see the, um, the different style of play that we can do in the attack, and I think a big part of it is having a player like Dunevich come into the side, um, and it was, it was evident, especially on the in the second game versus Senegal, how much we missed Dunevic. We have Pjanic, who is a really good creative player, but he plays he plays a pretty well, reserved role, and he's there to pick up the ball from the center backs, to carry it through the team, and on occasion, stream forward. But we don't have that Misimovic player anymore, and Pjanic isn't as attacking-minded as Misimovic was. At least, he's not as direct as Misimovic was. Pjanic likes to disperse the ball and have others do that part. And I think Duljevic, even though he's not a central attacking midfielder like Miska was, I think he can very well be our new Miska as long as uh, the second he starts, you know, putting some chances away too. But we desperately needed a player on that on that wing, on the left wing now that Lulic gone too. And Duljevic can be that outlet that can dribble, he can take opponents on, he can cause chaos, and at, at the very least he can you know, do the second assist, kind of like he did to Kolasinac. That was a really nice, he sensed the overlap coming in, he slotted it in, Kolasinac cut the ball back, and Kodra put it in. And I think that was a really good show of what we can do. Um, moving slightly on to the second game, I think this can be our transition into it. As seen in the second game, Vishcha honestly did not did not show anything to me that, that showed that he was deserving of a first team spot. Um, and that could be due to very 
variety of reasons because he's always showing up for his um, club team. But for some reason for us, I think Cordero, who's not a natural winger, you know, did more things than Misha did. Um, he tries to play a little more centrally, so he's not as wide as he could be. Yeah, but he still, you know, was more solid on the ball and I think did more productive things with the ball than Vishja did. But again, it's one game. We've seen Vishja, Vishja before and he's been, he's proven that he, you know, needs to be part of the first team. So we'll see how Prasnechki melds them all together. But it's going to be interesting to see, to see what newer and younger players are brought in and how they contribute to the, to the attacking parts of our team. Mm, uh, with Vishja, I mean, it's a weird one because like you said, I mean, I've spoken to a few of my Turkish friends who watch the league religiously and he's known as one of the best players in the league. His week in, week out performances are always good, whether he's scoring, assisting or just generally playing well. So again, it's disappointing to see, we, we seem to have a bit of a curse in the, the Bosnian national team of players playing well for their club and not uh, performing on the national stage and hopefully Vishka doesn't turn out to be like that. I still have a lot of faith in him personally to, to put in some big performances. And uh, touching on Pjanic really quickly before saying about Senegal, uh, Faris completely agree with what you said and his move to Juventus has converted him more to that kind of player who plays a very deep line playmaker role. Uh, so it does leave a big hole in the sort of that attacking fray, that central attacking midfield play. And with Senegal, the game against Senegal, the first thing I just wanted to say is that front three of Mane, um, the, um, Mane, yep. So, and Juf, that's the one, Juf. Um, that front three, pace, strength, can cause a lot of teams problems and especially a defence like ours. So I was very, very scared that we were going to concede goals. Thought we'd score, so uh, a nil-nil was not what I was expecting at all, but definitely some credit deserved for the manager and the team for, for a solid performance to keep the front three out. It could have easily been 3-3 three, three at halftime. Each team had three incredible chances. We had some chances which Vish just squandered. But I think Pjanic was just the best player on the field out of everyone in that game. He was he was incredible. His passes were on point and it didn't look like he made a single mistake. I'm really I'm really intrigued in seeing what Pjanic can do moving forward under Prosinecki's system. I think he can hit a new level that we've never seen for the national team before, and I think that's really exciting. I think a large part of that is the consistency that he's run into um, with Juventus. Honestly, knock on wood, don't want to risk and you know any, have anything happen to him. But like he's been pretty consistent with Juve for the last few months. He's been, he's been, yeah, you know, maybe he's worked on his fitness or something. Maybe it's the position that's agreeing with him. But he's been playing really well. He's been playing very consistently. He's been like not getting injured. And I think if you can translate to that, that to the national team, at least even in that aspect, he doesn't need to be that attacking mid. If he can play that deep line playmaker role, and we can have Bersh on one side and Sadic or Simadot or another um, workhorse on the other side that can help him get the ball back, hand it over to him, and have him move it forward, I think we can have a really good solid midfield in this kind that Prasneski likes to see with a three-man midfield. And then up front, we have we have um, Jeko who's still in the, like a. a you could still say he's in the prime of his career. He's, he's doing amazing at Roma. He, he comes up, he's coming off uh, one of the, his best seasons ever. And then if we can just get the wings figured out and get some creativity on those wings, everything would be fine. Um, like you guys said, I agree as well. I think the Senegal game was a, was a way to, I guess, see what we're going to be up against in the future. Um, like you said, playing against an attack of Mane, Duf, and So is actually one of the most you know, terrifying things you can think of in terms of playing against pacey players, but it, we, we still managed to do it, and I think a lot of credit needs to be given to two players who I never really credited much in the past, and that's Vranjic and Shunic. I think both of them were very, very solid. Shunic in that center back position did miles better than what Zukanovic did against a far worse Bulgaria team, and then Vranjic out of position in that right back position, I think he did so, so good. He, he like, he, 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 I think he carried the ball forward a lot better than I expected of him. He, he defended very well. I honestly, I would like to see a pairing of either Shunic and Vranjic or mix in Memishevic into those three and have them be rotated around as our main center backs. Bicakcic uh, doesn't need to be in there and Zukanovic, they can be reserves. And then we can bring in a real right back 
Lotonovic, but I, I, I'm starting to see, especially that second game, our team take form. But um, it's there's still quite a few things to iron out. Senegal game, one thing that I really noticed, Senegal was pressing us throughout the entire throughout the entire game, especially in that first half. I remember before we always had those problems against these pressing teams. And Senegal, that's a very fit team. They're a squad that's in the World Cup, that's preparing to go to the World Cup. And I was just impressed with how we responded, how we handled it. And of course we made some mistakes that'll be ironed out with time, with continuity. But it was just very impressive how we held our own against one of those pressing teams when it's given us so many problems in the past. Great point, Adnan, on, I was going to mention it in, in a second, about Senegal preparing for the World Cup. The thing is as well, of course there's a new manager and there's always a, a buzz and a hype to impress him, but Bosnia are, are in that stage and usually these friendlies before the major competitions, the teams not in the World Cup become like, you know, uh, a punch bag for these teams preparing. And so there wasn't too much to expect in a way, and the fact that we came out of it with no losses, no goals conceded, um, was not, as you said, it wasn't great to watch, but it was quite pleasing overall. I, th I, th I think it was very pleasing. I think what was pleasing to see was that we're trying, we're starting to have some kind of identity in the team. You know, under Bajdadovic, I think, I, I honestly, I always get excited when international breaks are coming up and we're about to see Bosnia play, but with Bajdadovic, I knew, I knew it was always going to be the exact same thing. There was never going to be any any new changes, any new system, any new, oh, we're going to try this, we're going to improve this. There was never anything new. There was no identity or a team. It was, as I read an article the other day, it was basically, we, we, we resorted to being a Stoke-like team. We're just shooting long balls in the air. We didn't utilize our technical abilities at all or anything like that. I think, I think with what Pusinecki, we're, what we're starting to see is a bit of an identity with this team. We're starting to get that. I mean, it's way too early to actually be making these kind of statements, but we're starting to see a little bit of a you know technical game coming in, um, and some some like of his ideas taking shape on the field, and we'll we'll see more of that as we see the players play more games together under his guidance. But um, it's for for the first time in like a couple of years, I'm starting to get excited about the way we play, not just seeing our players play together, but like the way we play and the way we um, take on stronger teams as they come. Yeah, and just a quick uh, note on, on Bajdarevic before we wrap it up. A cla not to dwell on the past too much, but just a classic example of, of amateur sort of management. You, you have the logic of, oh, we have Dzeko, he scores lots of goals. Oh, we have Ibišević, he scores lots of goals. Let's play them together and they'll score lots of goals together. That's kind of how it felt under him. It was like he was putting names on a piece of paper and expecting them to produce performances. There was no build-up play, no strategy, no tactics. And as you said, with the tiki taka sort of stuff, or with the free man midfield and playing out from the back, you can already see in two games that there's actually a thought process behind um, Robert's selections. All right, so it seems like we're approaching a nice time to cut off. Uh, on the next episode, we'll be talking about the youth teams and their performances, some exciting stuff happening there. And if you guys want us to talk about something specifically, just leave comments and we'll look out for them. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone.